The priest in his confession box was all alone that night when the footsteps on the flagstones fell loud as hammer strikes. They pounded through the open nave until they reached the door. Those steps echoed inside the box and shook it to its core. The priest was all alone that night as slowly he slid the screen, revealing through the grill a shape too shadowed to be seen. Forgive me, Father, said the shape. Against the Lord I've sinned. The voice whispered so low it seemed the air itself had thinned. Tell me, my son, what you have done. Your soul shall be absolved. But through the grill, the shape stayed still. The heart of the priest grew cold. The candles quivered in their stands. At length, the shape did speak. My story you must hear before forgiveness I can seek. The voice, the grill, that shape so still, inside the priest felt locked. He watched the candles flicker like the ticking of a clock. Then tell your story, said the priest, aware he had no choice. He listened captive at the grill, and so began the voice. This all began one Christmas morn when snow lay on the ground, the island like an empty page, the bells the only sound. Behind a maid a fisher came, as through the snow she led. From time to time she twisted round, or blithely turned her head. So bending at her slender waist, a word in snow she wrote. Then with a glance and flick of hair, away the maid did float. The fisher trudged in heavy boots, each print a dungeon lock. And when he stumbled on the word, his legs were clamped with shock. There gazing on those strokes in white, his heart was set aflame. The word he read, a message sent, the letters spelled his name. From then the fisher, Gilliatt, did dream of Derechette. His name there writ upon the snow he never would forget. But by the spring the butterfly had fluttered back to play. The winter snow seemed long ago, his name melted away. They said his mother came from France. They said she fled the blade. They saw she brought a baby son. Of him they were afraid. She reared him in a haunted house among empires of spiders. But anything that she did need, the Lord did there provide her. They said the boy was Satan's son and his mother Satan's bride though she raised a fine young man till death took her from his side. She left her son a trunk which had inside a wedding dress to be a gift from her above his chosen wife to bless. The girls all said they hated him though they thought him handsome. He stood as proud as any mast that ever graced St. Samson. But till that morn with Desherette he had not sought a bride. His first love was his fishing sloop, the boys of the ocean wide. He knew the crew, the Alligand, the Tremies and Sardette, the Oval Amphrey, Triple Roos, and White Bull of Corbett. They said that he had sold his soul to sail that sloop so well, and all the fish he hauled aboard had swum straight up from hell. They said his skill with wind and tide made him the devil's henchman. No pilot like him island-wide, and worse, he was a Frenchman. What isle is this of which you speak? The priest then sought to know. Across the seas, replied the voice, where fresh west winds do blow. Four years flew as a young girl grew and bloomed just like a flower. And with each year that fluttered past, 
his heart more in her power. He spent his days with fishing nets upon the brimming sea. By night he crept across her lawn to play pipes beneath the tree. Alone at sea, he dreamed of her, then watched her in her bower. Day after day, night after night, his heart more in her power. She seemed sunrise in human form, her coming shed a light. And should she but choose to smile, why? His joy was at its height. And so he launched a ship of steam, which made him rich on land. His second niece to Derouchette, he named it the boat Durand. But steam was sin to island folk, a beast of aim and dire. They saw a volcano belching smoke, a dragon breathing fire. So when one day the ship of steam was lost in fog and mist, they said it brought the wrath of God that such a thing exist. To speak of steam means long ago. How links this with your crime? So spoke the priest, but does the voice. All will be clear in time. News arrived that the most had survived, saved by a passing ship. The pillars of Le Douves held the steamer in their grip. The crowd soon ran to Le Thierry to tell him of his boat, which trapped between Le Douves only heaven under rope. He heard how waves had thrown the boat, then came the strangest fact. Though twenty feet above the sea, the engines were intact. No sailor spoke of salvage, it would only leave two wrecks. No ship could anchor off those rocks, no crew would risk their necks. Beside the uncle sat his niece, then taking hold his hand. Said she, I'd gladly marry he who could bring back Durand. At this, Letieri leaped and shrieked, the engine still has life. Save the machine which made the steam, my niece shall be your wife. 